So what is Little Samson? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I have this to offer you. And this is... This is the earliest sticker sealed. Little Samson. It's a Nintendo game. That's pretty amazing. You ever look at a list of the most expensive games ever and wonder, how in the hell is this ah. worth that much? New and unsealed retro games in this age are understandable for being pricey. Kids in the past would get a new game and literally rip the packaging to shreds to get to the cartridge. Loose expensive games, however, are an entirely separate thing. Between special editions, small productions, and other such factors, some retro games keep or even increase their value as the years go on. One such product, Little Samson on the NES. So why is this piece of metal and plastic more expensive than a lot of people's monthly rent? Well, let's find out. Little Samson was released on the NES in 1992 and made by Tekaru and Taito. A side-scrolling platformer, most often compared to Mega Man, Little Samson is an NES hidden gem that is known not so much because of its gameplay, but for its collectability. But that doesn't mean that the gameplay isn't fun or notable. In fact, I would argue that the gameplay is varied enough to help it stand out in the sea of Mega Man-inspired games. The story starts as a dark print is released from his prison and immediately begins to lay siege to the nearby kingdom. The king, panicking, sends out summons for four heroes to stop the threat. Each one of the characters then must go through their own intro level, which helps the player learn the character's individual attributes and moves in order to meet with the king. After a little disagreement between heroes, they all pledge to work together in order to save the world. You have control of each of the four characters who can be changed at will at the player's choice. Each have their own individual health bar, though overall they share lives. The characters include Little Samson, a human boy who can jump far, climb walls, and shoot bells to attack, Kakita, a dragon who can fly and breathe fire, Gom, a golem who moves slow but can tank attacks and hit the hardest in all four directions, and Ko, a mouse who is fragile but moves quickly and climbs walls and can fit in small spaces that the others can't go, along with the ability to drop bombs. These differences help make Little Samson as a whole stand out, as you can switch characters to best suit the challenge the stage is presenting you. Need to get past an obnoxious jumping section? Why not fly with Kakita? Boss giving you trouble? Lay the smack down with Gom. These distinct playstyles lead to different experiences per level. When a character dies, they are no longer able to be switched to or chosen again, unless all characters die or the level boss has been beaten, except for Samson as his skills are the bare minimum to beat the game, and without him, you will probably hit a hard wall you cannot proceed past. This can be prevented by collecting power-ups, such as health restoring hearts, one-ups, potions that when used can instantly refill a character's health bar, and special spears that can increase the maximum amount of health an individual character can have to a limit if you're playing on normal mode. The individual levels are broad and very detailed, with branching exits existing for a handful of them leading to alternate stages and even alternating bosses. They all end up converging for each of the sub-bosses, however, which are the direct generals of the Dark Prince. These characters have two phases, with a normal form and a monster form at the ready, which can lead to some unfortunate experiences when your main fighter Gom gets defeated on the first phase of the boss and now you're left with Samson and Glass Cannon KO for a giant dragon. But overall, the challenge keeps the game fun, and the flexibility in stage and character choice makes this game a rather versatile experience that you most likely will not own physically on your NES unless you get a bootleg. So why is this game dumb expensive nowadays? Well, due to the late release in the NES life cycle and little promotion, it sold very poorly in North America. As a result, the NTSC version of the game is worth in the thousands, even to this day with the loose price being worth approximately $2,000 and untouched in a sealed box being worth more than your car. However, if you have the opportunity to play this game with less scrupulous means, I say do so, as Little Samson is a fun experience. The game is rather short, but replayability is fairly interesting for a game of this era, such as using characters on levels you normally wouldn't use or going a different route to a sub-boss. Such a shame that this game was initially ignored, as the game becoming popular then would probably lead to less people shilling out house payments for it now. This game gets four buckets of money out of five. Yay. Oh, there he is. Hi, buddy.
Did we do it? We did it. Yeah.